um, have asked our environmental consultant, Peter Russell, to, to essentially provide us an update from a year ago on, on the status of that program. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Peter, but just to let you know that we've, um, Peter has been working on Alameda Point for over 10 years for the ARA, has done a great job representing our interests, um, and is um, a California registered engineer, a registered environmental assessor. He has a PhD in environmental engineering from UC Berkeley. He has specialized training in environmental law, business management, and insurance risk management. So a very capable um, consultant. We're really glad to have him, and he's going to provide us a, a short presentation on the status of our environmental program. So thank you. Good evening, Mayor Gilmore, members of the board. Thank you for the introduction. I'd like to fill in just a little bit more about my experience and training that uh, has helped me a lot on this base, and that is uh, the other bases that I have worked on the closure of and redevelopment. Those include uh, Fort Ord, um, Marine uh, Air Station in, uh, in Tustin, and the Penicia Arsenal. I've worked on several other major brownfield projects, um, Mission Bay cleanup in San Francisco, and two large rail yards in Sacramento, the Southern Pacific Rail Yard and the Union Pacific Rail Yard. So the environmental program at Alameda Point um, that the Navy is using to clean it up uh, has two main components. One is uh, CERCLA, which is short for the Comprehensive Environmental Response Compensation and Liability Act. You can see why most people use the acronym. Um, when this federal act was, uh, came about, uh, Congress specifically exempted petroleum products. So uh, at Alameda Point, a parallel and separate program, the petroleum program, is used to address the investigation and cleanup of, um, of petroleum contamination. The map on the right shows the colored areas, which are the circular remediation sites, and the grade-in areas, uh, mostly lines, are the petroleum program sites. So let's first focus on the circle program. Uh, there are 34 installation restoration sites, or IR sites, uh, that are cleaned up. Much of the decision-making work occurs in monthly BCT meetings. BCT is an acronym for BRAC and cleanup team. BRAC itself is an acronym for base realignment and closure. Uh, the BCT is comprised of the Navy and the primary environmental regulatory agencies, the EPA, the Department of Toxic Substances Control, which is a California agency, and the Water Board, also a California agency. The ARA participates as an observer. Uh, however, uh, the BCT members are very uh, pleased with the ARA's participation for several reasons. Uh, one is they don't want any land use conflicts, uh, unexpected land use conflicts, to arise after transfer. Uh, and without ARA's <coughs> participation, that would be more likely to happen. Uh, secondly, because I am working there on behalf of the ARA uh, and because I have been involved longer than any other technical person there, either from the Navy or from any of the regulatory agencies, the hour brings an institutional memory to the investigation and cleanup uh, that otherwise it wouldn't have. The other major program in addition to CERCLA is the petroleum program. There are 23 corrective action areas, as they are called. Uh, each of these areas is, is usually a, a large collection of sites, maybe a major pipeline or a tank farm. In addition to that, there are over 250 individual uh, petroleum sites that have to be closed. Many of them have been closed already. Most of them are individual tanks, some as small as uh, a 50-gallon diesel tank that uh, worked with a standby generator, for example. Uh, the Water Board is the lead agency for that. The federal EPA has almost no involvement, again, because CERCLA specifically exempted petroleum from, um, from its ambit. The regulatory agency's teams um, consist of the project manager who comes to the RAB meetings and the BCT meetings, but they also have rather large support staffs with specialists in the needed disciplines, as you can see there, toxicologists, <laughs> engineers, as well as public participation specialists and what have you. There are a number of state agencies that aren't involved in all the sites, but sometimes they are. CDPH, California Department of Public Health, 
uh, has a lot to say about radiological issues, CDF and G, California Department of Fish and Game, weighs in on wildlife issues such as the least turn, and as I said before, the Water Board um, has the most say on the, on the petroleum issues. Uh, fortunately, at Alameda Point, the cleanup approach favors, uh, as CERCLA requires, innovative technologies that reduce the toxicity, volume, or mobility of the contaminants. Uh, whenever feasible, um, short duration cleanups are preferred over longer duration cleanups. As of a couple of years ago, the decision making process at Alameda Point has included in its decision making the carbon footprint aspects of each of the alternatives it's considering. And uh, very good news for Alameda Point, most of the base is being cleaned up to unrestricted use. That will allow residential use, which is about the most demanding use there is. Cleaning up Alameda Point has not been inexpensive. The Navy has spent over half a billion dollars so far. This shows their expenditure in the last several years has ranged from roughly 30 to, to 60 million dollars a year. Um, they estimate nearly $100 million left to spend after this uh, fiscal year 2012. This graph shows the, um, the acreage of surplus sites only, which again is not all of the base because the entire base is not a surplus site, but it shows uh, that most of it, all but 20 percent, is either ready for transfer or is actively being cleaned up. This is a major improvement over April of last year. It's a, it's, a, it's a good news story. And when you add in the acreage that is not part of any site at all, you have roughly 85 percent of the base, which is ready for transfer or actively being cleaned up and will be ready for transfer by next year. This figure was, uh, was in your agenda item for the uh, October 5th meeting. It's part of the uh, term sheet between the, the ARA and the Navy. And the blue area is the area that would be transferred uh, by the end of next <coughs> year. This figure shows uh, the areas that will be um, cleaned up to the various levels. Uh, the green colored area is going to be cleaned or has already been cleaned to unrestricted use. Uh, the white areas are not part of any site, so there will, of course, be no restrictions on their reuse. Uh, the purple areas are still undergoing investigation. Some of those will end up being unrestricted reuse. Some of them will have use restrictions on them, but it's too soon to tell because the circular decision hasn't been made. And then you can see the two landfills off to the west end are going to be restricted uh, permanently, uh, probably for no more than recreational use, passive recreational use. There are two special topics that I want to talk about tonight. Uh, these have arisen since the presentation you got last year, you received last year, and they are getting a lot of active discussion within the BCT, and I'd like to go over each of them briefly with you. Uh, the first one has to do with cleanup standards for shallow groundwater. We're talking about groundwater that is uh, basically within the fill that was placed on the original bay bottom. It's generally from 5 to 20 feet underground. And the issue is, should all groundwater be clean to drinking water standards? Alameda has no plans for drinking groundwater at Alameda Point. Alameda gets its drinking water from East Bay Municipal Utilities District, and all indications are that it will from here on out. The, most, the low levels of most contaminants decay through natural processes regardless of whether or not the Navy is sampling until those natural processes achieve drinking water quality. It's not cost effective, therefore, to conduct long-term monitoring while drinking water standards are reached naturally. So instead of cleaning up to drinking water standards, they clean up, the, the, the option would be to clean up for protection of all other beneficial uses. The controlling one typically would be uh, protection against uh, vapor intrusion into buildings. This is the area that would be impacted by a decision to change the de cleanup goal from uh, drinking water quality to protection against vapor intrusion. The other special topic has to do with uh, portions, certain portions of the base that are planned for commercial mixed use. Uh, the, the full uh, range of possibilities for commercial mixed use include ground floor residential. Uh, 
In commercial mixed-use areas at Alameda Point, however, ground floor uses will be limited to commercial uses, not residential, which implies a less demanding cleanup against vapor intrusion. Remember, commercial, remember residential is the most demanding. Uh, residential cleanup standards will be achieved through natural processes anyway, whether or not the Navy continues to monitor it, since these, these compounds uh, degrade naturally, albeit slowly. Uh, Long-term protections for commercial and upper floor residential uses are more appropriate, it's, and it's not cost-effective to provide long-term monitoring for ground floor residential uses in areas that have always been planned for commercial mixed use. The area to which this applies is mainly uh, the area immediately south of Atlantic, as you can see here. Now we have a few more slides that are mainly a legacy of the presentation from last year. I'm just going to go through them quickly, and they go to uh, demonstrate that even after transfer, after remediation is done, uh, the regulatory agencies are still involved in assuring that uh, health protective activities and conditions remain, and that will mainly be done through the California Department of Toxic Substances Control. Uh, they use a contractor called Teradex that gives them a notice whenever there is an area with a land use restriction where digging occurs. Uh, the marsh crust uh, is an example of such an area. And wherever residual contamination remains, uh, either because of a land use restriction or the cleanup hasn't been completed yet, the Navy conducts a five-year review uh, of uh, of the contamination to see whether the remedy is still functioning as intended, whether there's been any change in, tox in the understanding of toxicity or cleanup levels, and, or is there any other information that would question the protectiveness. The Navy has just completed its second five-year review at Alameda Point and FISCA, which are done together. Thank you very much. I believe we had some questions or comments from the ARA board members. Council Member Johnson. Um, I had a question. So the, um, on the water restrictions, would people um, be able to have gardens out there in, uh, or would those have to be ab above ground in planters, you know, planting fruit trees, vegetables, things like that? This issue would have absolutely no impact on that. Okay. It wouldn't but affect it at Would all. there be any issue that would prevent people from having planting uh, any fruits or vegetables? Um, conceivably in some areas there might be, but this issue goes to solvents and other things that evaporate readily. Those usually aren't an issue for plants, okay. for vegetable uptake. It's, it's metals contamination that is usually more important for that, or PCBs, and, and that has nothing to do with this issue. So, but I think for the most part, all of those areas that were either white or green with no restrictions, that lack of restrictions would also uh, permit whatever gardening one might normally want well, to do. Well, that's good because I remember, I mean, some, some years ago they were talking about people not being able to plant fruit trees or uh, things like that. I remember um, this was an issue uh, for the residential area in the northeastern portion of Alameda Point, but uh, that was a very health protective uh, call on, on behalf of the BCT because the investigation had not been completed, the circular decision had not been made, and they didn't know whether this would be acceptable or not. The toxicologists have since weighed in, yeah. and the Navy and the regulators all agree that there, that there need be no restrictions on vegetable gardening uh, well, that's, in those areas. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's uh, good news. It's a good news yeah. story, yeah. yeah. Just a comment, you know, you're talking about groundwater restrictions. If the groundwater restrictions would be very similar to what we did at Bayport and the Fisk property? Yes, the groundwater restrictions on Bayport and the Fisk property um, say that you basically can't use groundwater for any purpose until it's cleaned up. The areas that we're talking about here are going to be cleaned up anyway. Uh, it's just a question of when the Navy can turn off its monitoring process. But it, it is a parallel situation. It's better, you know, that's what I would, would like to get across to people. That's yeah. pretty much what we're trying to get to. Right. Yeah.